My name is Christian. I'm the Chief of Staff at Astronus, and welcome back to the Astronus Vlog. This week, we're focusing on our Alaska satellite, which we are building in partnership with Pacific Dataport. We're proud that this is an Alaskan company owned and operated by Alaskans. They were founded by some people who really were the first people to do satellite in Alaska at all. We brought live television to Alaska for the first time. We pioneered the use of cable modems in rural Alaska. By providing competition, we were able to help bring prices down at the same time. And so they were a perfect future thinking customer as we went along for our first journey as well. For the whole history of Astronus, we've been focusing on Alaska. Over that time, we've really been thinking about Alaska as this far off place that will someday get internet, but not as the tangible, real people who are going to benefit from our service. In this vlog, we're going to meet those real people. We went to Alaska, we talked to the folks that are on the ground and going to benefit from our service. So let's go meet them. I love Alaska. When I was 17, graduating from high school, I was like ready to get out of here. I wanted to go see where the rest of the world was. But as soon as I left, I realized that I was from a completely unique and special place. It's a different life up here. And it's just all these things that I never would thought I would ever be in, like coming from South Florida to like, I live in Esther and it's a beautiful place. When I came here, I was coming to live two or three years, and now I will be buried here. I am not ever gonna live anywhere else. This is my home. This is where I wanna be. It's an amazing place, right? I came here from New York City in 1969 and never left. You know, you've got the mountains and the oceans and glaciers and everything, but I think it's the people that is a quality that's exceptional. I think the people generally are very nice. Friendly, you know, good, good warm kind of a culture. Oh, I'm so proud to be an Alaskan. We have to rely on each other in ways that I think a lot of the world might take for granted. When you take community along with all the amazing outdoor opportunities that we have here, it's a place like no other to live. Being an Alaskan is a huge part of my identity. And anytime I think about living elsewhere, giving up that piece of myself, it's just not worth it. I, I choose to live here and I really appreciate what I have here. So before you get to Alaska, you think of it as just Alaska. But once we got there, we realized that each of the cities that we were going to visit had its own individual character. In Anchorage, you could just see Denali. Just everywhere you go, you can see this big, beautiful mountain off in the distance. One of the places we went to, Bethel, is a small town on the western seaboard of Alaska, and it's completely off of the road system. The only way you get there is by flying. We were there, we met the mayor, and then we left. And it was a pretty quick trip, but it was great to get to visit a more remote and rural place in Alaska. We ended our trip at Fairbanks, which is a town in the kind of north central part of Alaska, and specifically Esther, which is a smaller town outside of Fairbanks. Esther's an amazing place for nature, and you can see your neighbor's fire pit and the small smoke rising in the distance. It's really a beautiful place. It's, uh, it's hard to articulate. There's a, a real spiritual element to you know, being in this environment. You just want to spend more time here. You want to understand how it ticks uh, because it is so different from any other place. I look back on my, on my 50 odd years and say, how did I luck out? come here and find this place. Every single person that we've met has a very honest reason why they love living in Alaska, but it's not without its challenges. There are lots of things that are harder about living in Alaska than living in the lower 48 states, and one of the biggest things, biggest challenges facing them is the lack of connectivity. The internet in Bethel can be a real challenge at times. Internet's a problem in our state. There is no internet. There's no cell phone signal. There's no communications. Started out, it was just dial-up, which is, was a total joke. And then I got to one above dial-up, and uh, that's not much better than a joke. And it, it can be intermittent sometimes, and sometimes it cuts out altogether. If you want to shop online, you can't do it. If you want to pay a bill online, you can't do it. When you don't have that stuff, you realize how much of today's society is based upon internet access, phones, cell phones. Well, the world's changing, you know, like applications are online now for school, for government services. Education, job opportunities, these are some of the things that 
are really important. Trying to run schools in remote locations with 25 megs of connectivity is near impossible to do. You know, you, you look at high school qualifying exams for, for citizens of Alaska and Hawaii, you know, it, it's clearly impacting, you know, education early on. And, you know, that, that follows through to, you know, where we're at now, adulthood, and we're at a disadvantage in terms of, in terms of access to information. You can't do quality education without broadband you, into the schools, even though E-rate's there, it's just still inadequate. When communication systems go down, it's a major problem. We have to rely on systems of communication. If you have 911, if somebody gets sick in your house, if somebody falls, there's no way to get in touch with anybody. These are these are things that I, I feel I, I sh we shouldn't have to think about. You know, almost almost everywhere else has has this access, and and you know we're we're uh, at a at a great disadvantage up here. The lack of broadband has really impacted thousands of people across the state. Well, people today will pay many hundreds of, of dollars to, to get a simple internet connection, not broadband, but just a simple internet connection. So someone that has broadband in rural Alaska today might be paying over $1,000 a month for that connection. Plans in Alaska, even a very cheap plan, runs at least $100 a month, but probably more like $300 a month for just the bare bones basics. If you wanted to buy an equivalent plan to what you have in downtown San Francisco, like a a gig line, that would cost you, no joke, $20,000 in Alaska per month. We have run out of internet every single month. And now I think our bill last month was probably $500 for internet. The internet is poor and way too expensive. I mean, people are already paying like $300 for 100 gigabytes and that's, that's insane. It's just too expensive. I'm not going to pay for it's you know, bullshit actually. And so when you compare that with what's available in the largest cities in Alaska or what's available across the lower 48, it's many multiples of, of what would be considered normal. So I've tried LTE, point-to-point -point wireless, ADSL, and nothing provides a reliable, consistent connection where I'm at. You know, you can't do much of a Zoom call, you know, when, when you're lucky to get 20 kilobytes connectivity. It's really, really slow. Every single person that we met knew both their internet speed and their internet price. And that's just not something that you hear from people in the lower 48 states. You know, um, price gouging is a big thing. Um, happens all the time, it's unfortunate. And it's, it's very frustrating. You know, things that should take me 20 minutes end up taking me sometimes hours. What would be a minor task takes uh, an incredible lot of time. Under the old broadband system, the old mapping system, you take a, a census block, which is a, a geographic area, which doesn't make any sense. If that cable touched a corner of that census block, all of us were considered to have high-speed internet, where the fact is that none of us do. Yes, yeah, so traditional satellites to date have had difficulty serving all of Alaska because they're placed over locations over the lower 48 to reach North and South America. And so those satellites have a hard time and in most cases cannot reach all of Alaska because the look angles are too low. So traditional internet solutions have focused on dense populations and big populations. Think a large city or a large collection of cities in the lower 48 states. That is absolutely not what they have in Alaska, which means that the economics of these sorts of internet solutions are very different. Infrastructure is expensive and logistically difficult to build here. And so it takes a lot of money. And then sometimes underserved communities don't get good access to internet or water treatment or things like that. You still have to be prepared when you travel to rural Alaska to be self-sufficient. There is no way for you just to go down to the local store and find the part or piece of, of equipment that you need to be able to complete your work. You have to take what you need with you and be prepared for that. It kind of sucks like that that's what we have to do considering especially that you know you can go online and see that like these the companies up here are getting hundreds of millions of dollars a year from the federal government to expand broadband in Alaska and they do the cheapest thing possible that they can instead of building out like the wired network they build like these little like wi-fi towers basically to broadcast internet that actually probably irritates me more is the fact that they're getting all this federal money and then we get just 
trash in return, you know? Interestingly, the FCC actually treats them as an entirely separate category. Alaska only gets a small fraction of what the FCC spends in the lower 48 states, and that's just not enough to build out internet for everybody in Alaska. There's an entire massive pot of tens of billions of dollars that is dedicated to connectivity in the lower 48 states, but Alaska is explicitly exempt from that money. They are ineligible to receive those funds. We have been left behind. There's communities here where they've grown large fiber optics right through their property and not giving them fiber access to it. It's sad to hear some of the conversations that my staff have to have with prospective customers and clients that we have to tell that we don't have the capacity to serve them today. When I first met with Astronus leadership and was presented with this as a solution, I was intrigued because it was an opportunity to grow the network sooner. The larger satellites would take longer to launch and cost much more money to accomplish. When the Astronus leadership shared their vision of the product that they were going to build, it became apparent very quickly that this was a great opportunity for Pacific Dataport to meet the demands that we had uh, the soonest. I'm, uh, I'm very eager for Astronus to launch their satellite. I'm looking for a static connection, and I'm, I'm very confident and hopeful that Astronus will be able to provide that for me. We're ready to put this technology in geosynchronous orbit. It's not, it's not a low Earth orbit satellite. This is a regular, honest to God, 22,500 miles up telecommunication satellite that will be focusing on Alaska. Now we can get connected and brought up to the rest of the world standard and, and we're, we're eager for that. Please. <laughs> With that accessibility, people will certainly be able to have uh, more affordability in terms of internet. Having more access to internet would be the dream. The day that we catch up to the rest of the world, the ability to access the internet from remote regions will save lives. The ability to connect and communicate quickly, I mean, that's like the difference between life or death. The day that we're able to have a nice, clear, full screen with a doctor or a nurse practitioner or a behavioral health therapist or a teacher or a business in Anchorage that you're trying to buy something from, it's gonna be a new day. I would be able to uh, actually FaceTime them without the, it being so pixelated or freezing every second. So it's kind of hard to do that now with the internet that we have now. Your know, adequate broadband across the nation and the world is, uh, is the future, right? I mean, you cannot, you pick up the phone and talk to your family someplace. Those things are basic, right? You just have to be able to do that. Without adequate broadband, high speed, affordable, reliable broadband, it's not going to happen. If we don't have it, we're leaving ourselves in the dirt, and that is unfortunate. Bethel is the hub for 56 Alaska Native villages. About, you know, 65% of the population of Bethel is Yupik. Yupik people have lived out here for an easy 10,000 years. Having access to like the incredible rich video collection that we have here from the last 50 years, all of that's going online. And so faster internet means that kids in villages across the Delta are gonna be able to hear and see elders from 30 years ago speaking Yupik. And that's, I mean, that's huge. That's information that doesn't exist anywhere else. Actually, if, if Alaska was more connected to the re rest of the world, I think it might help people's perspectives about other people in the rest of the world. I actually, I think that's one of the benefits of internet. We're Americans too, and I think we deserve to have fast internet. We deserve the same advantages that are brought by technology that everybody else in America and in, you know, an awful lot of the world enjoys. I honestly think that the success story for Alaska just means that people spend less of their time and energy thinking about internet. It is ever present in the lower 48. You don't think about it at all. It just is around you at all times. It's cheap, it's accessible, and it's fast. Having internet access in Alaska would mean a lot for the community. Not only for the normal things like access to healthcare, or access to education, or remote jobs, or things like that, but also just in cultural exchange. The rest of the world getting to see the uniqueness of Alaska. You don't see people posting from Alaska to the rest of the internet, but that's something that would be awesome. We'd get to see that natural beauty. We get to meet those people. 
that's the vision of the future that we are trying to build at Astronus, a world where not only is Alaska connected to the rest of the world, but a world in which the rest of the world is connected with Alaska.